Continuity editing is when scenes are edited to follow a logical narrative progression. Discontinuity editing is editing that breaks this pattern. It is often done to elicit a response from the audience. It's commonly used in horror and thriller films. In Christopher Nolan's Memento, it's used to allow the audience to experience the condition the main character, Leonard Shelby has, anterograde amnesia, a condition that affects the short-term memory and inhibits a person's ability to create new memories. Here we see Leonard's hand to shake the picture. The image begins to fade away, the opposite of what happens when you shake the Polaroid. As the picture reverses into the camera, we realize that at this point, the scene is moving in reverse. Here we see a series of still images before the scene continues playing backwards. The reason this scene, which is the first scene of the film, plays backwards is to set up the sequence order for the scenes that are shot in color. You're in some hotel room. The next scene in sequence is black and white. Leonard's narrating. An example of non dietetic like sound. Maybe it's just the first time you've been there, but we learn via Leonard's narration that he doesn't know where he is or why he's there. Because this is the second scene of the film, we as an audience synonymous. don't know either. We know as much as Leonard, which is very little. Once again, the scene is color. Here we see a of a Polaroid of Teddy, the man Teddy. Leonard killed in the opening. As the audience, assume Teddy is still alive due to the Leonard is asking like the desk clerk before. about him. As Ted pokes his head through the door and greets Leonard, we realize that he is in fact condition. alive. Oh, well, only every time I see you. Here Leonard mentions his condition to the teddy. From that, we glean that he has a problem with his memory. He can't form new ones. <laughs> As they argue over which car oh, to take, Leonard brandishes a picture of the car at teddy. From this, we change. figure out how Leonard keeps the track of people he knows and the items that belong to him with Polaroids. Fixed so where to, Sherlock? I got a lead on a place. Oh, uh, what the hell you want to go there? You know it. Yeah, it's just this fucked up building. Why do you want to go there? Don't remember. When Leonard suggests he and Teddy check out a building he has a picture of, Teddy objects, suggesting the building isn't important. This is one of the first indicators we have that Teddy knows more than he's letting on, and likely more than Leonard. Leonard suggests someone is there when he sees the truck but Teddy objects again. Leonard counters that the tracks are fresh. Teddy responds with a quip, but doesn't argue. This is another indication that Teddy knows more than he's letting on. What are you talking about? These tracks are only a few days old. Tracks? What are you, Pocahontas? Come on. Let's take a look inside. They go inside the building. It looks like the same building from the opening scene. This is a clue related to the way the scenes are ordered, specifically that they are playing in reverse order. When Leonard attacks Teddy, we can assume this should occur before the opening scene of the film. Teddy, don't believe his lies. He is the one. Teddy tells Leonard here that he doesn't have a clue. From this, we learn that Teddy does know more than Leonard. When he pleads with Leonard to I let him take it. him to the basement and show him who he is, this is a strong indication so. that Leonard, due to Let's his memory go, huh? issues, and is an extremely oh. unreliable narrator. However, because of the way the You're scenes are shown, we don't know who Leonard is any more than he does. You we only know as much as he does. The scene ends where the first color scene starts. Now we know for sure that this scene takes place before the color scene that preceded it in the timeline. Before I blow your brains out. Leonard, you don't know what's going on. You don't even know my name. The film was shot in two sequences. The scenes in color play in reverse order and start at the end, while the black and white scenes play in chronological order and start at the beginning. They are interspersed and follow the pattern of color, black and white, color, black and white, until the climax. This is done to allow the audience to experience Leonard's condition. 
by showing the scenes in reverse order, we're unsure of why Leonard's doing what he's doing, and we're trying to find out just like he is. No! Most thrillers start with a question, often who, and work towards finding the answer. But in this case, through the use of discontinuity editing, we start with the answer, Teddy. And you know, work you know backwards, are, trying to figure out the original question. All about yourself. But just for day-to-day -day stuff, notes are really uh, useful. Sammy Jenkins had the same problem, but he, he really had no system. He wrote himself a ridiculous amount of notes, but he, he'd get them all mixed up. You really do need a system if, if you're going to make it work.